Welcome to the Exponential Australia Church Leaders Podcast. Well, hello and welcome to our Exponential Australia Church Leaders Podcast. We are, again, so thankful that you join us, that you've subscribed, that you are coming along the journey as we're really trying to uh, provide opportunity for the Aussie Church to talk about church planting, opportunities for multiplication, And really to hear from global and Aussie voices around church planting, those who have become recognized voices and also those who are on the ground doing it. And today we are just so um, overjoyed to be joined by Cody Byrne, who along with his wife Chantel has planted Tribes Church in Perth, which is an incredible story that we're going to get to today. But Cody, we're just so glad that you would join us and, and take some time out today to have a conversation. Thank you so much for having me. So excited. Come on. Absolute pleasure. Now, Cody, obviously you've got an American accent. People will notice that <laughs> right away. That's right. <laughs> Tribes Church in Perth. I want right. to just give our audience, our listeners today, just a bit of a snapshot of who you are, how many kids you've got, where you've come from. And yeah, even as right. we're going to jump into some of the story of tribes today, what has led you guys to be in Perth? Yeah, come on. Well, yeehaw, cherry pie, NASCAR, <laughs> Jeff Gordon, you know. <laughs> Um, yeah, I uh, was born in Perth, Australia. So that's, that's my tie to, to the great Southland of the Holy Spirit. I hear it's called. Um, my father is Australian from Perth and my mom's American. So um, born um, in, in Perth and, and about two years uh, into my life, moved back to the States. So my parents were missionaries. Um, very, very just amazing people still together, married, you know, over 30 years and just such a, a strong testament of, of uh, yeah, living a life after God. And so grew up, um, yeah, in the States and I uh, have three younger sisters. Met my wife, uh, Chantel, when we were 20 years old. So uh, almost 10 years ago, which is uh, uh, such a, a beautiful thing. Um, and uh, we ended up yeah, getting married on July 4th of 2014. So uh, we hijacked the 4th of July in America. So <laughs> the fireworks every year come on over here. It's, it's still special, but not as uh, extravagant, I guess you could say. Um, but yeah, we have three kids, one on the way. So we're about two weeks away from our fourth child. And uh, all of our kids, fun fact, start with bees. So it's just a trend we're, we're, we're going with. So that's a good thing. Um, yeah, I grew up, uh, you know, not not wanting to be a pastor or a preacher. Um, I was a skateboarder, musician, like, hey, this is what I'm going to do. And uh, when I was 20, God really just interrupted my life and showed up. And uh, although I knew the Lord and had given my heart to him at an early age, kind of typical, put him on the shelf, do my own thing. And um, if, if you've grown up in the church, I guess the, the word is like, I got wrecked. You know, I got I got smoked by the Holy Spirit and he, uh, he really turned my life around and invited me in and um, really called me to, yeah, just, just serving um, in a very specific way. And it wasn't something I chose or signed up for. But um, at yeah, 20 years old, got in, involved in a uh, youth, uh, youth ministry. So got set up. My sister set me up, got invited, showed up, whatever, let's go. Um, and then four years later, uh, in 2014, um, got invited uh, to be a pastor at a mega church in America. So it's so really a, a crazy sort of journey from uh, just showing up, getting a random Facebook message, getting set up to now I'm uh, a pastor at a church with 20,000 plus people. So it, it was really is a very unique, very um, unorthodox, unorthodox journey I've had. Um, but that's just a little snapshot. Uh, led youth for five years. Uh, on staff, seven years in total. And then my wife and I got a word from God to sell everything and move to Australia to start a church. Amazing, Cody. What was the church that you were a part of in the US for those that may have heard of the church? So it's a church called Calvary Church, um, pastored by Skip Heitzig. Uh, comes out of um, a movement, I uh, believe that the roots were Vineyard, okay. uh, sort of the, the big Jesus movement revival, I believe, late 70s, Chuck Smith, hippies wow. and tents, you know, Holy Spirit coming. So uh, yeah, that, that's the church I've come from. Wonderful people, wonderful church, beautiful legacy. Amazing. Now you mentioned, you know, receiving a word from the Lord and and yeah. to go and plant this church, Tribes Church. I wonder if you tell us more of that story because, you know, we've spoken offline and, and that's yeah. quite an incredible story about how the Lord has directed your steps to where you are today. Why don't you, why don't you give us a bit of an overview of the story of 
tribes church up until today how you've come back to australia um even what does what does tribes mean your heart yeah, yeah. Just, as a pioneering and leading something great well as i mentioned i never thought to be a, a pastor a preacher a teacher you know church planning was never a thought in my heart uh and so when i had this um this dream back in 2016 uh, it, kind of, it caught me off guard. It was very significant, very vivid. I believe it was a prophetic dream from the Lord. And uh, at the time, I was about two years into um, pastoring, serving at, at this church on staff, leading the youth. Um, and this dream was just very, very vivid. It involved a desert, involved some water, involved a flower. And it was just this explosive, life-giving sort of left, you know, out of left field sort of dream, um, which for me wasn't something that I'd really experienced before, uh, sort of the, the whole prophetic um, nature uh, of God. I grew up in a great environment, you know, very uh, much exegetical, verse by verse, Bible teaching, preaching, um, and, uh, you know, just a, a wonderful environment. But for me, I'd never really experienced um yeah, the prophetic nature of God in, in that very, very tangible way. And so it was something that I wrote down. I, I put it, you know, in my notes and just was like, Lord, what was this? I believe it was from you. Uh, and just kind of you know, told my wife and just sat on it, just just held it in. Just, you know, I, I love how, uh, you know, we, we're told that Mary treasured all these things in her heart, you know, and it's just kind of this like, wow, okay, what was that? You know, never really knowing, always praying, always chewing on it. Um, but, you know, come to about 2018, um, I started to really feel alongside my wife, uh, like, like the grace was lifting, like, you know, the pillar of cloud that led the Israelites, like the cloud was moving. And I was feeling sort of this untethering, this grace that was lifting from youth ministry. And it was something that I'd never experienced uh, for me and my wife were like, youth is the jam. Like, this is what we want to do forever. I wanted to be the 45 year old youth pastor. <laughs> like, I wanted to be that guy. Um, but at, you know, about 20, 25 years old, 26 years old, starting to feel this sort of stirring, this shift. And I didn't know what it was, but I just began uh, with my wife. We were just praying, fasting. Lord, what, what, what is this? What, what are you doing? We feel like you're leading us to something else. Um, now, my journey with all the details, it, it can take a bit of, of time, but I'll just highlight a few of the sort of the big moments for us. Um, you know, I really believe that God will speak to you in the places that you look. You know, I believe that that he, he's looking for, um, you know, the, those desperate moments. And and so I was looking everywhere, Charlie, just number plates and books, just like, God, you're doing something in me, but I'm desperate. I, I just, I'm looking in your word. I'm closing my eyes and opening to a random page, you know, just really desperate. Like I feel this stirring. I don't know what it is, but I know you're moving. Um, now, October 2018, I'm driving and um, I see a number plate and it says, I kid you not, quit job. And so it says quit job. And then in America, the expiration tags are on the plate. And so it's, you know, however your, your registration is. So it's quit job and a separate card, not even the same one. The expiration tag says August 2019. So I, I read this and I'm like, OK, I feel like God is telling me to quit my job in August of 2019. So this is next summer for, for America. And, you know, for those listening, you'd be like, man, that's that's a stretch, man. That's crazy. But I felt I was like, there's something on this. And so I told told Chantel. And just over the period of the next few months, just that desperation, that prayer, we ended up coming out to Perth for a holiday and um, really felt like something was stirring here in Perth. Uh, came for two weeks. You know, we heard language, just random people. It's a desert out here. It's dry out here. We need water. We need the word of God. We need churches. And it was like this, like something um, that I'd been contemplating and chewing on. Just suddenly I had language for it. Suddenly I had the words for it. And we left Australia going back to America, starting to believe, okay, maybe we need to start a church and not just start a church anywhere, but maybe Perth specifically. And so we, we get back in uh, January 2019 now. Um, I think 2019 was like one of the craziest years of our lives. It's, it just was like sudden, abrupt, crazy. But we start off in, in January uh, doing a family sort of holy huddle, we call them. And my mom, uh, she starts reading Isaiah 43, and we get to verse 19. 
And it, it was as if it just leapt off the page, you know, behold, I'm doing a new thing. Do not perceive it. I'm making a way in the wilderness, streams in the desert. Behold, I'm doing a new thing. And we just all were like, wow, okay. I felt like a, the dream God had given me with all the details. It resembled this life, this this water in the desert, this this way, um, this newness. It, it was just this miraculous thing. And so began to really start this journey of, okay, I, I now I'm thinking church planning, which again, never had pondered. Um, I, I'm a first generation preacher, first generation pastor. So it wasn't something that I grew up being trained to, you know, here's how to do strategy. And these, like all of this was new. Um, and in some ways I'm, I'm learning, I'm, I'm drinking from a fire hose. You know, that's just been my journey of uh, just show up, you know, just show up, just show up. And so um, starting to feel this stirring. My boss takes me to, to lunch. This is crazy. First thing that comes out of his mouth. This is probably a week after the Isaiah 43, 19. And he says, Cody, when are you moving to Australia to start a church? And I was like, oh, snap, this is real. Okay. <laughs> and um, and it, again, just resonating with me. Okay, when am I? So now it really began this journey of, um, well, we need clarity, we need the timing, we need the provision. Um, and just even, of course, being from Perth, feeling like I had some words, some, some you know, light bulbs, some, some um, you know, things resonating while I was here, still wanted that confirmation. And so from about January to April, again, just desperate, looking at number plates, looking in, in books. You know, I'm like Gideon trying to throw out fleeces here and there and just praying, Lord, Lord, Lord. And um, and in April, um, we ended up at the church launching another campus in the city. So we had you know, 180 staff all there, um, all together, writing our names on the walls, praying. It was beautiful. And, and then we, we saw it open. We went as a team to pray and rally and uh, cover it, uh, fill, fill the uh, the space with faith and, and the, the spirit of God and um, and a coworker comes up to me and he says, uh, Hey, Cody, you need to pick any city and you need to go and you need to teach the word of God. And I'm like, okay, all right. Some, something's happening here. And, and my prayer for those months had been, do I pick America? Or do I pick Australia? And so lo long, long and short of it, um, you know, I, I get back to, um, my car, I'm driving another number plate pulls in front of me and it says PCK triple zero. So pick America, pick Australia. I read it probably as pick triple zero. Wow. And I'm like, okay, what's triple zero, right? So I Google it and it's the national emergency number for Australia. Wow. So once again, you're like, man, you're reading too far. But I'm like, man, the spirit of God in me was like, no, you need to go. And in that moment, it was just this, all right, this sounds crazy. Um, and this sounds wild, but I, I have this peace and this resolve and this assurance that I got to go to Australia. Wow. I have to go. And last little detail, which kind of adds adds uh, some more, um, you know, uh, beauty to the story is, uh, you know, I, I start crying. I'm like, just the peace. I call Chantel. We're both like, we're going to Australia to start a church, you know, but when, when, what does it all look like? Um, and still where, where in Australia? Uh, Gold Coast doesn't sound too bad. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, Perth's definitely not a bad place to be, man. Yeah, it's the truth. <laughs> I think I think it's the best place. Yeah. Um, but we get back to the church and the coworker who told me pick any city. Um, we end up, you know, talking and he says, Hey, um, you know, I just felt the Lord told me to tell you, I tell him about my dream and there was this flower and it was very specific. And, uh, I never knew what the flower was. I decided I need to Google this. I need to search it. Turns out the flower in my dream, uh, come across it on Google, click on it. It's called the Northern queen of Sheba orchid. And apparently it only grows in Southwestern Australia. And if you remember August was significant for us, um, I found out it only blooms in August and September. So it was like this crazy, all right, Lord, you know, Southwestern Australia, specifically the flower blooms, Perth and North. So I'm like, all right, Perth it is, August it is. And so at that point, you know, a lot of faith, we, we owned a home, you know, cars, our whole livelihood, 401k retirement, um, two kids at the time. And so um, in 12 weeks, we just went to our, our leadership, said, hey, here's what we're feeling. Here's what we're stirring in. We want to leave well. So we, we put out some stipulations, right? We need to raise up the leader. It's just kind of this, let's go for it. Let's see what happens. Um, put a house on the market. Second day, all cash offer. 
raise up a fantastic leader who's in the wings, ready to go, sell everything, get a one-way ticket, um, you know, put everything we own into six duffel bags, hop on a plane and show up. So that that's that's sort of the journey to get here. And um, and when we landed, um, it was just uh, an incredible invitation. We felt from the Lord of, of um, yeah, recalibrate sort of let, let's let's go back to basic let's you know it was really a beautiful time coming from this big world of you know gone four nights a week ministry you know i'm i'm at, you know 24 25 i've got five staff under me and you know hundreds of kids and leaders and this big world and and to come out here and not have anything it was like whoa this is this is different but we really felt an invitation from the lord to yeah, like almost like this come away with me, come in and rest and receive and kind of level up, if you will, you know, receive an upgrade thinking spiritually. Uh, and so I spent nine months. Um, I didn't work and, uh, you know, was off social media and just with my family, learn, learning my kids, learning my wife. You know, we felt the Lord said, don't have, you know, you don't have to work. So I turned down four jobs and, you know, we're just with the Lord in, in his word writing and, and, you know, this rug here on the floor, just laying here, just like, God, I need you. This this desperation, this, this recalibrating, this metamorphosis, I feel like, and so much of our leadership and what we're doing now has really come from that, that place. And so, um, yeah, I spent nine months, um, started the church legally. We got connected with some lawyers. Um, and then, um, yeah, you know, COVID hits and that's a whole other, other story launched, March 7th of 2021. And here we are about what, 15, 16 months later and just seeing God move, seeing God be faithful, seeing souls saved and, and people, you know, blessed and healed and it's just been, been incredible. So that's, that's a little bit of the journey. That's incredible, Cody. And I really appreciate you taking the time to, to share both the highs, lows and realities of that. You know, that's, that's, that's definitely par for the course mm-hmm. of the church planter. Yeah. I guess where my mind goes, as you've been sharing, is particularly to that word about behold, God is doing a new thing. Yeah. And that being a beautiful word, obviously, for your family at the time. But even that sense in, in which even in Australia, that feels like that is the case right now, that the yeah. Lord is doing yeah. a new thing. Um, and for you guys with the boldness and courage to be able to step into a new season, new nation, I guess what I'd love to ask you about is, is, and you've shared a little bit just towards the end of your sharing there around metamorphosis and letting the Lord minister to you and that being kind of the birthplace of whatever the Lord is now doing and into the future as well. Yeah. I wonder if you'd share just about like what it feels like to, and I know you had some kind of context in Perth, given your childhood and I'm sure maybe some friends and, and it sounds like there's amazing church unity in Perth as well, where the church yeah. gets yeah. alongside one another. Yeah. But for you coming in effectively parachuting into a new city, like new place, I imagine new schools for your kids, <laughs> yeah. new house, new cars, yeah, you know, yeah. where tribes is, is kind of located itself geographically. What did that look and feel like as you were kind of dependent upon God and, and you know, even just that sense of where do we start? Yeah. You know, it, it, it was such a... I think a shock to my system, if, if I'm being honest, kind of parachuting in. Um, and I think that was so much of really um, the invitation that the Lord invited me into. What he, what he actually said, and it was through my wife, um, and I was a bit resistant to it because, you know, I, we came from like, you know, just, just a hustle, like a holy hustle, just getting after it and systems and events and conferences, you know, just, just a lot happening. And you know, kids getting saved and discipled and, and baptized and, you know, just this, this, this move of God, it really was something that, um, you know, was, was really, really beautiful. And, um, and it was just so, so interesting because my wife had told me, she said, Cody, I feel like you need to enter into a silent season. Like God's calling you to be quiet. And I, I was like, no, nah, we came here to start a church and we're going to launch this thing in six months. And, you know, we're, and, and, and I just felt the Lord really just kind of, you know, like, like a gentle father, just kind of putting his hand on my head and just, you know, like, hey, just sit down, you know, just sit down. And I, I was so blown away, um, you know, just with with pruning and, and the whole process, you know, uh, Jesus says that, that um, you know, if you bear fruit, you're going to be pruned, you're going to be cut back so you can bear much more fruit. And, and I just think that that if, if we could get around the, the reality that um, the, the result of our obedience uh, is pruning. 
that, that God wants to do a greater work uh, through you, but first he has to do it in you. And that was really for me, just like, okay, I, I got, I got to get some better equipment. You know, I'm going to, to do a greater work, but I need greater tools. I need greater language. I need greater revelation. I need, I need greater anointing. And, um, and so initially it was very uncomfortable to, to feel like, okay, um, I've been working so hard. I've been going so quick and, and so doing so much. And now I'm just sitting, you know, God, am I now not effective? You know, have you moved on? It's this very, you know, sort of, okay, where, where, where are we at? And, and, um, but it was such a sweet space where God met me. And, um, you know, I mean, I could spend hours just talking about, I have this note in my phone, it's called confessions of arrested soul. And it's just like all these things I learned and just, ego being crushed out of me and just, you know, timelines. And, and of course, I'm still a work in progress, but just really beginning at meeting with Jesus, really beginning at, you know, I had this, this thought early, I woke up at 4am this morning, and just thinking, it's easy to just talk to the Lord, right? But oftentimes, I find myself, I just am talking to God. But I, I have to remind myself that I need to actually look to him, I need to look to his face, I need to, to seek him and to take my eyes off of all these things and to just behold him and just look at him. And, and I think that was such a, a starting point of okay, of, okay, Lord, let me just look to you. Let me just get to know you more. Let me just worship you and, and meet with you. And, and that's really where our blueprints have come from it. You know, I, I love strategy and systems, but I'll be honest, I'm more convicted in my soul to really talk about the Holy Spirit and, and our theology and our teaching and the environments we're creating. And I think, you know, systems and, and, and all of those things are so important in strategy, but I'm like, man, the greatest strategy I've learned is just seeking God and getting the blueprint straight from him. Like Moses got the tabernacle blueprint straight from God. I'm like, Lord, if, if we could just look to you and get like, what do you want this church? Look? This, this is your church. You know, and you've called me here not to build my own thing, but to build your body, to, to plant something that, that is in your heart, you know. And, and so I think that that's been the starting point. And really everything that we do really just stems from that heart posture of, all right, Lord, what, what do you want us to do? What do you want it to look like? And so we, we got, you know, practically speaking, um, you know, just meeting people and trying to build friendships and you know, while we were here, we, we were just resting. We went to other churches. We're, we're sowing into other churches. We're, you know, showing up and just being a part of the body, and just wow. receiving and not not trying to, you know, uh, take um, logs from another man's fire, but just, hey, can we just bless you? Can we just be here and, you know, not, not um, you know, compete or try and assert ourselves, but hey, man, we're just here and we're just thankful to be a part of what God's doing. So I think that's really the the crux of, yeah. Of, our, of our journey and, and really even to this day of just lord what what do you want let me meet with you let me receive from you yeah that's so good cody one of the things that um i was thinking about earlier as you were speaking um you know even in that and i, I feel like this is a theme that's coming up throughout our conversation but around behold that the lord is doing a new thing yeah yeah what, what i'm you know greatly excited by as i hear your journey and on behalf of Exponential, as we pray to see many more young men and women come through the ranks of the Australian church that would have a heart for church planting. That's our mm -hmm. great hope as, as anything is healthy, it will reproduce itself. And you guys have kind yeah. of felt that call as a, yeah, yeah. a comparatively young couple, you know, 30 years of age to, to audaciously step out and to plant a church. And, and I guess the question that came to my mind is, as you were doing this, amongst your peers, amongst youth, you know, young adults and young people. Um, we know that the gospel is as relevant now to the next generation as it has yes. ever been with all the questions that young people have. I guess from your observations, what have you and Chantel seen as you've you know, been ministering to your peers? You've been seeing the hunger in the hearts of um, young adults in your community. Like, What do you think some of what the next generation is really looking for in a lot mm. of church. Yeah. I, I really believe that authenticity is the new currency. So I, I really, really believe that this generation is just wanting the real thing. You know, they're, they're just wanting um, what's real. And, and I think that, you know, what, what our generation, I, I believe Gen Z and the generations to come, um, 
you know, I, I don't believe I'm painting a broad brush here, but I believe that my father's generation was very much, um, you know, just let, let's, let's find a model and let's get after it and let's just replicate the model. And, and you know, models are great. Uh, but I, I really just feel like, like for me, it, it was just a burning conviction is, you know, it, it's, it's really easy to just want to be like someone else's fingerprint, right? Like, let me just copy the model. Let me just do this. And that's church. And, um, and if you really think about your fingerprints, I know you learned this when you're like five years old, but if we could just remember that none of our fingerprints are the same. And, and what if God has given each of his, his, his uh, expression, right? The, we're all different members of the body. So we're all of a different fingerprint, if you will. And, and I think that when it comes to church planners, leaders, pastors, is we have to be okay with being our own fingerprint. And we have to be okay with, hey, you know, we may just want a white wall and just a glow of lights and no flashing lights. So we, we may not want coffee or we may not want to use loud instruments. Like, I think it's like, okay, well, who am I to criticize? That, that's your race. That, that's between you and God. So I'm going to do what I, I'm called to do. And I'm going to create an authentic environment for the people to come in and to receive. And I, I just think that if, if we as church leaders can just continue to fight for that authenticity, because when, when we're being authentic and we're letting God do what he really wants to do through how he's made us and wired us, um, then people are going to experience the, the, the real thing. You know, I, I think, for example, specifically in Perth, a lot of the younger generations, they've got this acute sense to smell when it's fake. You know, like, oh, they're trying too hard or, or um, you know, are they being too precious? I hear that word thrown around here in Australia, right? Um, or they're trying to be a hero or, or whatever. And, and I just think that you know, really people are, are, are craving authenticity. And, and the fundamental, the, the baseline of that is they're just craving God. You know, like we're all made in his image. We're, we're all um, craving truth. And, and I'm finding as well that with that authenticity, uh, people not only want the real thing, but they want, um, they just want, I, th I think, someone to just be honest, to just be honest, to not, you know, I, in, in, in the past, I found myself like sort of chilling in ambiguity because it's easier instead of being like, hey, this is what the word of God says about marriage and gender and sexuality and, and, and you know, uh, eternity and, and the family unit. And, and if we could just, you know, as, as leaders, just be, be very um, uh, aware that of, of all of the things that the younger generation and people are, are facing, um, that, that it, it, it really is all solved in the word of God. And, and that's why we need wisdom, as Paul says. We need to speak to the, the truth and love and we need discernment. Um, but I think if we could just be about creating authentic environments that point people to the real Christ, allowing the real Holy Spirit to show up to minister, that we could just be bold and courageous and say, hey, I'm not here to build uh, audiences or empires. You know, I'm, I'm just here to, to, to build the kingdom. I'm here to build altars, people to meet with God. So, um, yeah, I, I'd say authenticity and just uh, just honesty, the big things. Cody, that's, that's phenomenal. And I guess the, the, the one last question that I would want to ask in, in our conversation today and as a, as a – fellow brother in Christ who's been pursuing planting as a, as a, as a younger leader, as one who has kind of sensed that call of God on their life, not just for ministry, but also to that bold task of pioneering something of, you know, going through the, the, you know, the, the kind of what you went through by way of just sensing God's call on your life and even the challenges of stripping everything back and rediscovering your, you know, your heart for the Lord again in that season. What would, what would you want to say to a younger man or woman who might be beginning to feel that wrestle towards planting, like that sense in which, Lord, I, I never thought that I could do this. I didn't feel like this would be in my 10-year plan. Like, um, and, and they may be kind of very faithfully either serving as a lay leader or even a pastor within their local church at the moment, but they feel like God is starting to turn their you know, future towards church planting, what would your encouragement be to that type of person that could be listening right now? My encouragement to them would be um, to trust God <laughs> and, and, and to step out in faith. 
Yeah. You know, I, I think that, you know, really, like this word's just been born in, in, in my heart lately, just this phrase. And if I could just, you know, release this to those listening, um, I just feel the Lord just saying this so clearly. Is you, you can't afford to not show up. Wow. You, you can't afford to not show up. And, and I think if, if I look at my life and my plan and my tenure and, and all these ideas that I had, I think the more that I journey with Jesus and I have a long way to go, I don't know it all. Uh, I'm still growing. Um, but, but I, I would realize I would, I've come to the realization that my life is, is meant for way more than just me, mm. that, that there are other people on the other side of our obedience. You know, there are other people on the other side of our yes. And, and God, he, he's a generational God. And, and I love that he cares about us specifically, but he also cares about those to come. He cares about my kids and their kids. And I, and I just would say that for those who are feeling stirred and they're feeling like, OK, um, this came to me or this was prophesied over me, but I'm afraid of provision. I'm afraid of timing. I'm afraid of where he's going to send me. Um, God will not lead you to nothing. He, he's leading you to something. He, he's with you. He, he's the God who owns a cattle on a thousand hill, right? I mean, I'll tell you what, if I could just, just celebrate for a moment, we had a board meeting the other day, you know, our church is, um, you know, what, 15 months old. We had in the past calendar year, 123% increase in our giving. 123%. And I'm like, God, this is just you doing it, you know, stirring in the hearts. And, and so money is not an issue to God, you know, people, I mean, he, he's brought people from all over the world, like legit. There's a girl who moved across even Australia just to be a part of this church. And I felt called to come and to serve. God will provide the resource. He'll provide the people. Uh, he'll give you the grace to do it. He'll give you the anointing to do it. Um, and he, he's just that good. And so if, if we can just understand that our lives are meant for more than us, that, that if we're um, here on purpose, right, for a purpose, that, that if God is, is good and faithful and, and with us as he promises us, then we, we cannot fail. You know, we, we, he's faithful, the word says, to do the work in that which he has started. He's faithful to complete it. And so you can't afford to not show up. You, you got to do it. You know, people are, are waiting for you. People are waiting for you to come and to bring the unique expression that God has put in your heart. People are waiting to hear the good news um, and, and, and the reality of God and his love and his mercy. I'll just end with, with this quick story. Um, my wife and I were on a little baby moon, a little vacation last week. Um, and we went into a shop in a, in a, uh, a town down south. And it was probably a, a woman in her, in her mid-50s and just a, such a sweet spirit. And uh, we ended up talking to her, said, what do you do for work? Oh, we started a church. She's very interested about it, uh, wasn't churched. And so at the end, I just felt this, hey, can I just pray for you? Um, and so she said, sure, I'd love that. And so we, we laid hands on her, we prayed for her. Um, and I'll tell you, Charlie, the, the presence of God was just so thick in that moment. And afterwards, she was so moved. And she looks me in the eyes and she says, thank you. No one has ever prayed for me before. And I'm like, man, all right. You know, I know we're in a little bush town down south, but just the fact that, that you know, God has called us to this region and that, you know, it's, it's not just us, it's, it's people, ever. it's his body, that if we could recognize the opportunity at hand, that we could recognize the open door that's in front of us. That I mean, I have so many stories, people coming and first time they're giving their life to Christ or first time coming and, and you know, just this repentance and this, this new life. And I mean, I could go on and on and on, but really, People are on the other side of your obedience. People are waiting for you. They need the good news and you can't afford to not show up. Cody, I and, and we as listeners today, I'm sure absolutely admire your courage and, and your story has been a, a great inspiration, I'm sure, to many. So, mate, we just want to thank you so much for, for sharing some of your journey. And we, on behalf of Exponential Australia, are absolutely you know, cheering on Tribes Church, wishing you and Chantel an amazing future season as you guys are about to have your fourth child. We really, really appreciate your time today. Thank you so much. God bless you. Thanks for listening. For more great resources, please head to our website at exponential.org.au.